right on time. I won't have to wait. There's still time to get out of this, Dan. There's still time. Before color film was in common use, usually reserved for those studios that had a big enough budget, so reserved for the bigger, more epic movies with the big name actors. Black and white was the industry standard since silent films. Cinematographers became well adept at how to use it effectively. Here we are, looking at 10 of the best Western films that use black and white film. As always, let me know in the comments what you think. Classic black and white Westerns. The Oxbow Incident, 1943, a Western film directed by William A. Wellman, starring Henry Fonda, Dana Andrews, and Mary Beth Hughes, with Anthony Quinn, William Ive, Harry Morgan, and Jane Darwell. Two cowboys arrive in town when news arrives that a local rancher has been killed and his cattle rustled. The townspeople, joined by the two cowboys and the men from surrounding ranches, form a posse to pursue and catch the perpetrators. They find three men in possession of the cattle and are determined to see justice done on the spot. Director of Photography, Arthur C. Miller. The Furies, 1950. Directed by Anthony Mann, starring Barbara Stanwyck, Wendell Corey and Walter Houston in his final film performance. Based on the 1948 Niven Bush novel of the same name, its plot follows the hot-headed daughter heiress of a tyrannical rancher who fancies himself a Napoleon in the 1870s New Mexico Territory, who struggles with her state in her father's business and estate. Director of Photography, Victor Milner, uncredited, Lee Garms. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. Directed by John Ford, starring John Wayne and James Stewart. The screenplay was adapted from a 1953 short story written by Dorothy M. Johnson. The supporting cast features Vera Miles, Lee Marvin as Liberty Valance, Edmund O'Brien, Andy Devine, John Carradine, Woody Strode, Struthers Martin, and Lee Van Cleef. A senator returns to a western town for the funeral of an old friend and tells the story of his origins. In the unlikely named town of Shinbone, having his ass handed to him by a local hoodlum, Liberty Valance, Lee Marvin, but does not seek revenge on his attacker. He seeks legitimate justice by the book. But then, Director of Photography, William H. Clothier. High Noon, 1952. Directed by Fred Zinnemann, starring Gary Cooper. The story focuses on the town marshal, whose sense of duty is put to the test. He must decide whether to face a deadly gang of killers alone, or turn tail and leave town with his recently married wife. Mired in controversy due to its political themes at the time of its release, nominated for seven Academy Awards and winning four actor, editing, score, and song, as well as four Golden Globe Awards, including black and white cinematography. Director of photography, Floyd Crosby. Three Ten to Yuma, 1957, directed by Delma Daves, starring Glenn Ford and Van Heflin, based on the 1953 short story, Elmore Leonard, about a drought impoverished rancher who takes on the risky job of transporting a dangerous outlaw to justice. The title song, The Three Ten to Yuma, was written by George Dunning, music and Ned Washington lyrics, and sung at the beginning and end of the film by Frankie Lane. The film was remade in 2007, directed by James Mangold and starring Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. Director of Photography, Charles Lawton Jr.
The Gunfighter, 1950, directed by Henry King, starring Gregory Peck, Helen Westcott, Millard Mitchell, and Carl Malden. The film was the second of King's six collaborations with Peck. Infamous gunfighter, Jimmy Ringo, Peck, arrives in town to find his true love. She doesn't want to see him. Not looking for trouble, but trouble finds him around every corner. Director of photography, Arthur C. Miller. Red River, 1948. Directed and produced by Howard Hawks. Starring John Wayne and Bon Bon Lift. A fictional account of the first cattle drive from Texas to Kansas along the Chisholm Trail. Dramatic tension stems from a feud over the management of the drive between the Texas rancher who started it, Wayne, and his adopted adult son, Clift. The star-studded supporting cast features Walter Brennan, Joanne Drew, Colin Gray, Harry Carey, John Ireland, Hank Warden, Noah Berry Jr., Harry Carey Jr. Director of Photography, Russell Harlan. Stagecoach, 1939. Directed by John Ford and starring Claire Trevor and John Wayne in his first big role. The story follows a group of passengers on a stagecoach through deadly Apache territory. The film has long been recognized as an important work that transcends the Western genre. Philosopher Robert B. Pippin has observed that both the characters and their journey are archetypal rather than just individual, and that the film is a mythic representation of the American aspiration toward a form of political meaningful equality. Stagecoach has not avoided controversy. Like most Westerns of the era, its depiction of Native Americans as simplistic savages had its critics. The first of many Westerns that Ford shot in Monument Valley on the Arizona-Utah border in America's Southwest. Many movies Ford shot there also starred John Wayne. Director of Photography, Bert Glennon. The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, 1948. Directed by John Huston. An adaptation of B. Travin's 1927 novel of the same name. Set in 1925 and follows two downtrodden men, played by Humphrey Bogart and Tim Holt. They partnered up with a grizzled old prospector, the director's father, Walter Houston. Searching for gold in Mexico, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre was one of the first Hollywood productions to be shot on location outside the United States, in the state of Durango, with street scenes in Tampico, Mexico. Although many scenes were filmed back in the studio and elsewhere in the US, Director of Photography, Ted D. McCord. Winchester 73, 1950. Directed by Anthony Mann, starring James Stewart, Shelley Winters, Dan Derea, and Stephen McNally. The story is about the journey of a prized rifle from one ill-fated owner to another and a man's search for a deadly fugitive. It is the first collaboration on a Western film between Mann and Stewart, the first of seven projects they created together. Filmed in black and white, it was also the first film where an actor received a percentage of the receipts, a practice known as points, as a method of payment. The cast of supporting actors, Rock Hudson portrays a Native American, and Tony Curtis plays a besieged cavalry trooper both in small roles at the beginning of their careers. Gotta start somewhere. Director of Photography, William H. Daniels. I hope you liked the video. Leave me your comments. I really appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. As always, please hit the notification button to get my new videos. I'm Wrangler. Bye for now. Interesting facts about famous people.